This is it. Things are getting a little weird. Things are getting a little bit antsy. Forget about what I just did there. Welcome to college basketball week number one. <laughs> As we get prepared for another season of the madness, the shining moments, the everlasting, you know, memories. Remember this. Remember it well. Only one team will get to hoist up championship banners, the trophies, and all that good stuff at the end of the season. So let's have a good season. Don't attack me, please. Illinois fans, please. Please, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of all that. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired from, uh, from last year because, I mean, you know, what happened last year. Let's make this a good season, everybody, because this is my second year doing this, you know, covering college basketball on a weekly basis. Um, again, this year I'm going to be doing it a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be doing the top four games each week um, because, again, right now, as it currently stands, I don't have a lot of time to be devoting to college basketball, you know, college football, NFL. They're taking up a lot of time, and my job also takes up a lot of time. So, you know, for now, um, and it just works out perfectly this week. There are four big games this week. It works out very perfectly. Uh, let's talk about some of these other headlines first, however. There are a couple of headlines that have made the news, including some that have made the news in the past few hours or so. Um, first off, Kofi Coburn for Illinois. You know, not a bad way to start the video. Suspended a couple games for selling apparel and memorabilia. You know, or, you know, last year, that was like last year, 2020 or something like that. You know, so again, it's unfortunate, but I mean, it is what it is. The NCAA just does not care. You know, obviously, speaking up, they speak up, them not caring. They just don't care about Oklahoma State because Oklahoma State receives a ban from the postseason. You know, and Oklahoma State apparently fired the dude responsible for the actions that got them banned from the postseason. I don't, I don't know what the whole details are. I just know that Oklahoma State is indeed banned from the NCAA tournament this year. So it's unfortunate. And what we learned, you know, a few hours ago, what we, what seems to have been circulating in the news that I saw a couple hours ago as I was doing my notes for college football, is that the Seattle University coach, Seattle plays in the WAC, remember, and he might have used, and it, it probably, probably used racial slurs on separate occasions, a couple of occasions here, administratively for him. So... I don't, I don't even know his name, the Seattle coach's name. I just know he's on leave. Get on out of here, you know, for now. I know, I know I could mention the top 25 in here real quick, but I don't want to. There's no reason for me to. You know, again, a lot of well, top 25 doesn't really, you know, matter too much to me, you know, right now. Because, again, you know, a lot of teams right now, as, as we get into the early portions of the season, are taking on cupcake opponents and most of the time 95% of the time the cupcakes are going to get eaten by the big dogs so you know the fact that we have four huge games to open up the first week of the season really says a lot first one up first Champions Classic game you know Champions Classic has been on ESPN as a staple for a couple years now well, actually longer than a couple of years it's been like a decade or so so you know things with the champions classic have been a huge deal huge deal and you know the first thing that stood out was Jalen Wilson unfortunately he got arrested for a DUI got released on bail but he got suspended for a couple games so without him Bill Self needs to, to Ochai Abaji and now transfer from ASU, Arizona State, by the way, Remy Martin. Oh my, oh my goodness, I'm surprised that, you know, again, a lot of guys seem to be a transfer, you know, and that's the case with a lot of these teams here. You know, a lot of transfers coming up that we'll be talking about. 
And again, Remy Martin was pretty good last year for Arizona State. I watched a good chunk of Arizona State games last year, if I'm not mistaken. And again, things looked good. For Tom Izzo and the Spartans, you know, Max Christie, he's a freshman guard. How will he do? You know, in Michigan State, you know, I, I don't know what they're returning from last year. I'm not sure what they're returning. I just know this, this Max Christie guy, he seems to be, he seems to be, you know, a guy that's going to have some of the answers for the Spartans this year. He's going to have some of them, not all of them. Of course, there's plenty of emerging players around for Tom Izzo. And the other Champions Classic, you know, Tuesday night, November 9th, that's Duke, Kentucky, number 9 versus number 10. Top 10 battle with Coach K retiring. He's starting his tour in style with the number one pick potentially in the NBA draft, Paolo Banchero. Yo, and I hope I said his name correctly because I always get names wrong. Mark Williams also still there for Duke. You know, and I mean, this could be a very interesting, you know, matchup here. You know, Calipari, Kentucky, you know, Coach K, always huge. You know, Kentucky trying to respond after, you know, you know, last season's disaster. I mean, this is not, that was not the Kentucky you want to see from last year. And this guy is like Davion Mitz and then and, and Ty Ty Washington. Ty Ty Washington, I believe he's, he's another guy that could be like a one and done type deal for Cal Perry. So, you know, again, this, this one right here, this matchup right here, late Tuesday night, is going to be pretty interesting to see, you know, the contrast these two coaches. You know, again, it's a lot. It's it's got, it's got a lot about these coaches here. You know, a lot about these players. But definitely, you get to know the coaches on a more personal level with it. You know, too, because I mean, Calipari, Coach K. You know, been just been they're they're one of those. They're coaches on blue bud programs. They're, they're I mean, they they try to out coach each other for the best recruits and stuff like that. So that Champions Classic is going to be interesting. The Champions Classic is always interesting to see how it goes, how it plays out. And again, two more, two more games here to cover. Two more games, two, just two more. One of them is on Friday night, and another duel of good coaches. This time, it's the number four team in the country and the number two team in the country. Villanova, number four. UCLA, number two. Final four run for UCLA last year. A lot of guys came back. War Mick Cronin, Johnny Juzang came back. Tiger Campbell came back. Jamie Jacquez Jr. came back. There's a newcomer, Peyton Watson. I'm interested to see how he does. You know, Colin Gillespie for Villanova. He's back. You know, Brandon Slater, Eric Dixon, Jermaine Samuels. You know, a good core group for the Wildcats of Villanova looking to take the Big East yet again. You know, they, at this point, you know, Villanova feels like Kansas with the way they've been racking up Big East titles over the past, you know, what, almost decade now the Big East has been together. The new Big East, anyway. So, gonna be a duel of good coaches here. Pretty damn good coaches. Last but not least, Saturday night. It's gonna be a doozy of a Saturday night for me. I cannot wait for this. You know, it's gonna be a nice, crisp Saturday night of just watching, you know, an actual Texas team with a lot of talent that has a lot of expectations. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you thought I was talking about football, did you? No, I'm talking about college basketball. Chris Beard has brought in a lot of transfers. You know, unfortunately, we didn't get the promise as Texas fans for having the hardest schedule in the country. But this is a damn good consolation prize for the Longhorns. A damn good one. Marcus Carr brought over from Minnesota. And Minnesota was a damn good team last year. Again, a lot of the Big Ten teams were really, really good last year. That's why, you know, there was so many ranked Big Ten teams at one point last year. Courtney Ramey, Andrew Jones, also back out there. You know, and this one's going to be really, really interesting because a lot of people are seeming to turn against Drew Timmy. And, I mean, this is going to be this is going to be crazy. This is going to be one hell of a game right here. you got Chet Holmgren. you got Andrew Nimhart, the Freshman Chet Holmgren uh, gonna be a huge. This is, this, is, this is gonna be a huge couple weeks for Gonzaga. A huge couple weeks because I mean, you get Texas, you get Duke, you get UCLA, you get Bama, you get Texas Tech too. You also get Washington as well. You know, in there. 
but definitely the first three weeks of the season before the calendar flips to December. My goodness, this is going to be one hell of a week. You know, going to be a one hell of a week capper for college basketball. Number five versus number one. Number five, Texas. Lots of expectations for the Longhorns this year. Gonzaga looking to actually, you know, go out in style with the title. You know, despite the fact that Mark Few, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll say this. I feel like, you know, you know, the thing about Mark Few being suspended for the drunk driving incident, I feel like it was just a ploy. I feel like it's it's a cause for worry. But it's nothing. It's probably nothing. You know, at this point, I feel like it may have been intentional that Gonzaga scheduled two exhibition games because there's only 30 regular season games for Gonzaga. Most teams either have 31 or 29. That's just how the schedules work with the tournaments and stuff like that. Um, so Gonzaga only having 30 games, you know, kind of worries me. But at the same time, it is what it is. I'm ready for this matchup again. Two great coaches. I mean, it is what it is. They're Beard versus Few. Um, you know, a matchup made in heaven. You know, gonna be one hell of a matchup between Texas and Gonzaga. You know, again, Beard brought a lot of guys. He brought like five or six different transfers. I'm trying to see, you know, again, how this Texas team is going to do this year because there were times last year of the Shaka Smart. And I believe he's at Marquette now, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he's at Marquette. You know, Shaka did get his guys disciplined enough. And, you know, Beard, I think, is one of those guys that could do that, you know, for Texas. We all know Gonzaga is very disciplined. We all know this is a damn good Gonzaga team like they are every year. You know, we all, and I keep, and I keep hearing, you know, the misconceptions about, you know, the West Coast Conference. And I'll, and I'll say that right now, you know, West Coast Conference is one of the, you know, they're the better, they're one of the better conferences, in all honesty. You know, and they really, really improved with Gonzaga. It's not just Gonzaga beating up on the WCC. It's Gonzaga, you know, improving, having to get out, you know, having to survive some tough games, you know, with BYU, St. Mary's, San Francisco, you know, tough, tough games now for the Zags. You know, it's been that way for the past couple of years now. It's not been the entire decade. It's been the past couple of years at least. You know, 2020 was a huge... Yeah, 2020, 2021 was a huge example. 2020... I mean, things, you know, you know, for the Zags were not as pretty as people like to say because, I mean, again, people like to say, oh, Mickey Mouse schedule, cupcake schedule, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it is what it is there. Like, again, front-loaded. You know, and it does not, it does, again, it does not stop for Gonzaga. It does not stop for the Zags. You know, again, next couple weeks is going to be huge for Gonzaga. And it could be very, very huge. You know, this is the biggest start that you could imagine. One of the best opening weeks I think I've seen in a long time for college basketball. I don't think I've been this excited for an opening week in college basketball in a long, long time. And I'm ready for it. But are you ready for it? Tell me, tell me, you guys, who who you rooting for this year? You know, come on down to the comment section. I know there's, you know, I know there's some fans of Alabama in here. I know there's some fans of North Carolina in here. You know, and things, things are looking really, really pretty this year. I cannot wait for the season to start on November the 9th. I will see you all next week to, you know, kind of get a little bit of a recap of week one. I'm not going to, that's another thing I'm going to say right now. I'm not going to be doing recaps. I, I might have said at the beginning, I'm not going to do recaps this year. I'm just going to be doing previews for college basketball. So, you know, this week in college basketball, blah, blah, blah. You know, I think that's what I'll title the series, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, again, you know, I hope all y'all enjoy you know, because we, we got a long season ahead. Again, see you next week with uh, with the next college basketball video, by the way. Because they'll be recorded, like, back-to-back, -back, you know, after the college football videos, for now, at least. So, again, uh, I'm excited. Again, uh, just, just tell me, again, your thoughts down in the comment section below and stuff like that. Um, you know, like, share, again, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. Do all the good things you need to do. Keep supporting me as we continue to grow here on this channel 150 and we're gonna keep on growing 
I'll see you soon, everybody, for NFL and college football.